Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you are reading that headline right. Banks financing Mexico gangs admitted in Wells Fargo deal from June of last year, now more than a year ago, from Bloomberg, Associated Press, you name it, but was not a big issue on the nightly news. Now, I couldn't go to sleep. It's Friday night. Why am I here? Because laying there in bed, I began to think about just how ridiculously in our face and obvious all of this is. I'm going to present proof here. I'm going to cover it more Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. on my syndicated radio broadcast, that the same banks that have purposefully imploded our economy and many other economies by design, their own documents show, have been controlling narcotics trafficking for hundreds of years, even before it was illegal, and that they made it illegal so that they could control the black market, corrupt police, and get a much higher price for their products. Of course, back in 1997, they had the Solicitor General of the CIA before Congress have to admit that, yes, the CIA brought in crack cocaine, the recipe flooded the country with that. Why do they do it? Well, it's multifaceted. They don't work for America. They work for Wall Street, which is setting up a global private corporate government. They then use the scourge of drugs and the fact that there's so much money in it and that people are robbing and stealing to get the drug money to buy the drugs and furnish their habit as a pretext to then destroy the Bill of Rights and Constitution. It's problem, reaction, solution. And this ties directly into Operation Fast and Furious. So let's go over it ourselves very quickly. Again, I just showed you Bloomberg. You can look all of this up uh, for yourself. Uh, here's just a couple more of these articles. Here's one that was in uh, Daily Costs. Reuters actually picked this up, but it got no attention in the United States. This is now three years ago, 2008, actually 2007 when it first came out. CIA torture jet wrecks with four tons of pure cocaine. It was registered for the CIA, making rendition torture flights and at the same time shipping cocaine around. It crashed in Yucatan uh, down in southeastern Mexico. And there were, of course, newscasts uh, on it as well, but not in the United States. Now, why do I bring this up? Here's another sterling example of this. And if you go to Infowars.com, you can read this detailed report that links to mainstream press releases by the federal government of Mexico, the federal police news channel, and major newspapers and radio stations in Mexico, including U.S. reports and federal court cases inside the United States. Los Zetas Kingpin, we brought... We bought guns directly from U.S. government. Now, this just broke in the last few days. But here's what you need to know. In this report, we have countless other federal court cases where it turns out Los Zetas and other major cartels were armed beforehand under Bush and that we actually broke this six years ago and again five years ago and four years ago with Sally Castillo, who was a retired DEA agent. And he said that they tried to recruit him in South Texas to train Los Zetas, that there was going to be a stolen election by Calderon, and that Mexico was going to be imploded by design. We linked to all those video interviews. We shot video while he was in the radio studio. Uh, PrisonPrint.tv has been around for eight years. So select interviews, we shot video of it and posted it there. Now we're live all the time, uh, visually, but back then we just taped special interviews. We have interview after interview with Sully Castillo, who also was one of the main sources for Gary Webb, the Pulitzer Prize winner, on Dark Majesty, uh, Dark Alliance, uh, and the CIA drug running. So what's going on here is so incredibly important. It's not just that the Justice Department has been caught lying to everyone uh, and saying that they didn't order the ATF, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Farms, and Explosives, to sell and, and to allow 30,000 guns out of the United States into Mexico to then connect them to murders and crime as a pretext to call for gun control. 
Holder's already been doing that for two years, saying that's what's causing Mexico to collapse. And then saying we've got to ban assault weapons, we've got to ban more than one gun being sold, we've got to shut down gun shows. Now, the head of the ATF, because he doesn't want to be burned, has come out and said, of course we were ordered to do this. Well, we don't, and, and now press releases are coming out where they found Holder going back a year and a half ago, uh, actually in 2009, talking about how they were running operations to track guns. So they're kind of protecting themselves early on, but not giving details of uh, exactly what they've done. So this is the information we're covering, and it's the same thing with the narcotics. It's order out of chaos. These big mega corporations are masters, just like the Rothschilds were 200 years ago, financing the French and the British, or financing the Austrians and the French. It's the same thing over and over again. They play both sides. And Castillo has been totally proven to be accurate. He came out, he's now in prison for, uh, for speaking out on these things. They set him up just a few years ago. He's in federal prison. The guy never had a criminal record by the ATF, by the way. It's incredible. Um, he was on record saying, watch, Mexico's going to blow up. Los Edas is f trained at Fort Benning, Georgia. Now all that's come out by the U.S. military. They are there as the uh, stealth secret army muscle of the big banks, uh, henchmen at the CIA to knock out uh, the other drug cartels. And that's what this is, is the big banks going in against cartels they don't control and uh, jacking up uh, drug prices by interdicting it. Then when you or your family's dumb enough to use drugs, they pick you up at a checkpoint for a small amount of cocaine or heroin, the $500 billion a year industry that the banks are laundering. Of course the government's involved in this, and, the, the, and they are, admittedly are, the aircraft, everything. And then they put you in their own private prisons, many of which are also financed by the big mega banks. So you then work for 25 cents an hour as a slave for them, driving down wages more than even illegal aliens. Now this is such a masterful program. You weaponize uh, and militarize the police. You have a no-knock warrants kicking doors down. The general public is robbed in crime waves of people uh, stealing stereos and computers and cars to get money for the drugs. And then it all goes into the big banks. They get publicly caught and don't even get in trouble. Ladies and gentlemen, this is 100% proof of false flag stage terror against America. And it's now confirmed in Fast and Furious that the government knew this was happening, it was helping ship them into Mexico, and we knew this years ago, but now it's confirmed, and more and more of these top people uh, are being caught and are admitting in U.S. courts and Mexican courts, hey, I work for the government, here's the proof. But we already have that through the banks, the CIA aircraft, all of it. We knew about this new war coming years before it even happened. And those interviews are so important in this story. Los Edis Kingpin, we bought guns directly from U.S. government. So this is a false flag attack on our liberties, our freedoms, the Second Amendment. This is how the military-industrial complex takes over society. I'll be doing more detailed reports, but this is so important because we've got to stop being naive. We've got to stop being so foolish. We've got to stop being a bunch of suckers who believe that good people run the government and the system. Our naivete has allowed this corruption to grow to this point, and now the government's staging terror attacks to get the trillion dollar police state uh, contracts here domestically and their federal goon force of the TSA. And of course, the mid-level goons are compartmentalized and think they're actually fighting a real threat of drugs and terror. Look at bin Laden's CIA. Look at how they're using Al-Qaeda against Gaddafi. It's the same story. That's why these banks are so powerful. They hate America, they hate freedom, they hate our Second Amendment. All you good old boys that you know go, well, yeah, well, they do do dirty tricks to win. No, they're doing this to destroy America. Get this out to everybody. This is a staged.